Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the Course in Miracles, everybody. It's so good to have you in the house today. We are going to see what the special message is for us today. Because there's never an accident, whoever's in the house. The Course in Miracles teaches that Everyone that comes into your life, they're sent. I know I saw a look, some funny looks. Yeah, everybody that comes into your life, sent into your life. And the Course in Miracles said they are sent with a lesson that you can learn together that very day, if you choose to. And I choose to learn whatever the lesson is that I'm supposed to have from you being here today. And I, I'm a cheat. At the Course in Miracles taught me that the lesson is a lesson in love. It's a lesson in freedom. It's a lesson in peace. It's a lesson in sanity. Not insanity, in sanity. We want to have a lesson in sanity. Are you open to that? Yes. So I'm going to challenge you today to those of you online, those of you watching on Facebook Live, Thank you for tuning in to The Course in Miracles. I'm Earl Purdy, and I absolutely love to talk to you no matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing. That was quite a dramatic entrance. I like that. I needed that. Thank you. I needed that bad. I needed that bad. So these are the guidelines to the course. You need not believe the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. You need not even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas, 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 did I say some of the ideas? Some of the ideas you may actively resist. Some of it is going to be quite startling. Some of it may bring up some resistance just because of the definitions you've given to some of the words. Like if you hear the word atonement, based on what you learned in the past, you may feel some resistance to hearing that word. The Course in Miracles uses Christian terminology to describe universal spiritual themes. So the Course in Miracles has its own definition of the words and it promises that if you use the ideas without analyzing the ideas, that the use of the ideas will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that they're true. So it's using it. If you get frustrated, if you're on the spiritual path and you're frustrated, or you're on the spiritual path and you think things aren't changing, would you like to know why? because your mind hasn't changed. It's because your mind hasn't changed. It's because your mind hasn't changed. See, I used to think just, you know, just hearing about an idea in a sense that was the same as my mind has changed. So I sometimes think I should be experiencing the result of something that I've heard, but I'm not actually using the idea. I'm not using it as a viewpoint. So it's not until you use the teachings of the Course, for instance, as the viewpoint that you used to interpret your experience that you get the miracles that the Course in Miracles promises. For instance, let's say you were having a financial problem. The Course in Miracles says you only have one problem. That in itself should make you feel better. Yeah. It says you only have one problem, and that one problem is separation. It says that one problem is we think we are separate from God, that we think we are separate from the creator, that if we knew, really knew our connection to source, if we really knew our connection to source, if you were really aware that you were linked to the most powerful force in existence, you would not be worried about money, 
You would not be worried about your relationships, your job. As a matter of fact, there's not a thing you are worried about or concerned about that you would really be worried or concerned or confused or wondering about if you really knew you were connected to source and you were in communication with this. So let's just get honest with each other, right? Can we try that? Yeah. Just a few thousand people <laughs> listening. Okay, I'll say it again. You have one problem, and the core, according to the course, and that's, that's our relationship with our source, our creator, God, if you will. And if you knew that you really had that connection, no BS, you really knew you had that connection, you would not be afraid about anything. You would not be worried about anything. You would not be feeling guilty about anything. You would have no anxieties about anything. So let's get clear, according to the course, if you have any of those things, you truly, truly don't know your connection to source, God. So that's our problem. That's our problem. Well, it, would, it would have to be hard if I don't know my connection to God. <laughs> it, it makes perfect sense that it's hard for me if I don't have the connection. That, that's the definition of hard. Okay, the reason why life is hard is because... The Course says this world is based on the idea of what would it be like to have an experience in which I thought I was separate from everything and everyone, including my creator. Let's just say you were pretending, right? And you go, okay, I'm going to imagine something. And you go, what would it be like to live in a world where everyone thought they were separate and different from each other and did not have a conscious awareness of their connection to God? Bingo, Earth. Bingo, because because that's the thing that's most debated, most doubted, is the idea that God exists. And the other one is we're absolutely convinced we're separate, different beings that's separate and different from everything and everybody. And then we hope we can get a few relationships that are special enough to give us some sense of being cared about and connection and connected in most cases we sell our soul to do that. By selling our soul I mean you don't express who you really are and change for someone else or try to get someone else to change for you in order for you to feel happy or peaceful. That's what I mean by selling your soul. You stop being authentic to try to get some level of attention from somebody. And then we've been taught that we are physical bodies and so therefore we try to make our physical body generally attractive enough and appealing enough to attract someone to us that we want to validate us. And so, uh, so the course calls the body bait to catch another fish. And, you know, my bait, not as good as it used to be. <laughs> Don't say it. No. That's what I said. My bait isn't as good as it used to be. Older is not as good as in this world. In this world. I mean, we can pretend that it's not like that. And again, then we back deep in denial, but that's okay. In this, in, in, in the spirit world, it's perfect. In, in this world, it's not. Okay, so let's, you know, so I know I'll say things that you're not supposed to say, like everything. Yeah. Like I don't just try, yeah, I don't just try, I don't try to talk positive all the time. Because I feel like a lot of times that's the main reason people are screwed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's because they think being spiritual is being positive. Mm -hmm. And so therefore they constantly say things they don't have any belief about. Mm -hmm. And sweep the real issues under the rug mm -hmm. that need to be taken a look at under positive thinking. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying it's not okay to have a positive, optimistic outlook, but not at the expense of being aware of what's really happening in your life and what's happening around you, which is what many spiritual students do. They, they think being spiritual is going deep into denial. Mm -hmm. And so I often say, denial is not a river in Egypt, <laughs> right? So I'm going to get as real with you as I can get. And um, today we're going to talk about the circle of atonement. It's on page 282 in the text, the Foundation for Inner Peace version online. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for wanting to hear the Course in Miracles. 
And thank you for not wanting to uh, listen to a teacher that analyzes the Course in Miracles or debates the Course in Miracles or tries to convince anyone that they need to believe the Course in Miracles. I am not that teacher if that's what you need. I'm a messenger, and a messenger's job is to deliver the message as clearly as they can, but they are not responsible for your interpretation of the message, but they can help you hear it better. And don't shoot the message. You know. And, well... Yeah, when I used to think it, I needed to defend the cause, it was easier for, for me to experience the, shooting the messenger. Now I don't have that kind of ignorance well, that was about it, you know. And, I'm, and, and, and uh, so, so right now, I've seen so many miracles in my life, and I've seen this work so many times in so many ways with so many people, and it, it, it has escalated in my life to the point that I am literally in overwhelm as I stand in front of you right now. It's one thing to read this book, and it's one thing to say all this true stuff, and to read all this metaphysical true stuff. It's another thing when you start to see it manifest in ways that you cannot describe to people because it's your experience and not theirs. So they can only relate to what they're experiencing and not necessarily what you're experiencing. So it seems like fantasy to them because in their world it's not happening. Does that make sense to everybody? So I can, sh I, I can share with you that the Course in Miracles really works. And I'm not just saying it from my experience. And does that mean I don't have things to still come up? No. Does it mean that my ego, the part of me that thinks I'm separate from you, still doesn't tell me? No. What's different is the way I handle it. I go through the same things anybody else goes through. The only thing I see that's different with the truth student that's really applying the Course and a person that's not is that they don't use it when situations come up. They use it when things are going good, they'll see it. But the minute they have a real challenge, they go back to the world's way of dealing with it, which is the same as saying they go back to the old way of handling whatever they handle. That's all it means. Uh, I, I'm going to abandon what I'm learning, and I'm just going to go back to my old way of trying to handle things on my own. So the Course, is when it talks about the atonement, it's talking about the undoing of fear. And the... Uh, recognition of your innocence. See, that's different from what most people learn when they heard that. Atonement, I gotta make up for what I did to you. I gotta atone for my sins. The Course says I got to undo fear. I have to undo an incorrect way of looking at things. I got to recognize my innocence. That's what it means by atonement, okay? I'm gonna keep it simple. The Course says every bit of pain that you experience on any level, any pain that you experience on any level in any way, guilt, sickness, lack, attack, anything that's making you feel less than joyful and whole is a reflection of some unconscious guilt that you are not aware of or are aware of. Most people are not aware of their unconscious guilt that's why it's called unconscious guilt. <laughs> okay, it's something I'm not aware of. So they'll say, oh, I don't have any guilt about anything, but my relationship sucks, my job sucks, I'm sick, I don't want, you know what I'm saying, I got, they'll name a whole list of things that go, but you know, I don't have any issues. <laughs> There's nothing really going on in my life. As a matter of fact, I know what the problem is. You. <laughs> the problem is you. It's not me. That's what, that's what the people, you know, have you ever said, Aaron, if somebody breaks up in a relationship and the next week they're in another one, mm -hmm. they don't think they were the problem in the other one. They don't think that it had anything to really do with them. They think that another dramatic influence. <laughs> <laughs> For a whole new reason. That's all, okay. So. <laughs> For a whole new reason. <laughs> Why do you have to sit next to me when I enter like that? <laughs> yeah, what is that? Well, I just, I have, I have, I have a hideous front row. That's what it is. I have a hideous front row. Um, so, the course, so the Course in Miracles is saying that the only thing that's incorrect is your perception. You think, so the person would think is everything else, but they don't realize that the lack of peace that they're having it's coming from their perception and not the thing. I, I say that over and over again because we might have to hear it a thousand, two thousand times before we really get it. It's not kidding when it says that your mama is not upsetting you, your brother is not upsetting you, the Republicans, the Democrats, Trump, whatever is happening in the world is not what's upsetting anybody in the world. There's nothing happening, not the environment, 
none of that's really what anybody's upset about. What everyone is upset about is the way they are seeing all of the things I just mentioned. That's where your upset is coming from, your, from the meaning that you're giving it. So it says, the very first sentence on page 282, it says, the only part of your mind that has reality is the part that links you still with love which is God. I'm going to use the word love a lot because it'll take it out of that abstract man in the sky kicking butt. Okay, <laughs> so the only part of your mind that's real, the only part of your mind that is true is the part of you that still is linked to love and freedom and oneness and unity and connection. That's the did it say the only part of your mind that's real? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's by definition, the part that worries, is it real? No. The part that's angry, is it no. real? No. The part that thinks you're lacking in any way, is that part real? No. Is the part of your mind real that thinks you're just your physical body? No. no. So according to the course, which we don't have to believe, the only part of any of us that's real is the loving part. So if I see anything in anybody other than love, I'm looking at the unreal. What's, now, what do we mean by unreal? Well, that's a good question. What do we mean by illusion? Not eternal. Not eternal. Mm -hmm. That's right. You're going to get a lollipop in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an it's, it's edible. It's going to be an 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 edible. <laughs> well, see, y'all giving edible whatever meaning edible meant. I said edible, oh, yes. then you made up what edible meant. Yes, we did. That's what we do about everything. That was a perfect example. That's what we do about everything. We take a word and then we give it our meaning. Especially if I say edible in Colorado. And don't get me wrong, I don't think there's anything wrong with edible. I don't think there's anything wrong with any of that. Because again, it's neutral. You're the one that gives it all the meaning that it has for you. Yeah. Right? No matter what it is. No matter what it is. You know. Um, so let's get clear again. According to the Course, Something that's an illusion is something that's not permanent, something that's not eternal, something that ends. So when we say illusion, you have to go back and go, okay, what does the Course say about that? Not what I learned from the world, not the, def the definition I had of that before I came into class, but what is it that the Course says an illusion is? Any part of my mind that is not linked with love. Then it says, uh, would you have all of your mind transformed? Yes. 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 Do you know what it's going to be transformed into? A radiant message. Mm -hmm. Not just a regular message. Yes. A, a radiant <laughs> message. You know? so that's what you do. You just ease up to somebody in the club. You go, I, have, I got a radiant message. I, I want to give to you right about now. Come on, go. And then she go calls the police. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's the person sent me by God. Yes, of course. The person then, sent to me yes, by God exactly. would not call the police. That's right. Exactly right. <laughs> uh, and the one that does call the police, I would think they were not the one that was sent by God. <laughs> There's been a kind of bad process of elimination. I leave her alone. Yes. Okay. That's right. The minute she takes out her key and her fist, I would say so maybe I'm not the one. Okay, because I'm too loving. That's right. That's the perception right there. I'm too loving, so I bring up a lot of suspicion. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Be loving and see what kind of suspicion you bring. Okay. You can be a butthole and everybody loves you. You start to be really, really, really loving and sane. Yeah. And people go, what's your game? <laughs> what is it that you're trying to I know you got I know you got something you're trying to get from me. Yeah, yeah away. <laughs> Time to get away. That's what I'm working on. That's what I'm working on. Let's get away together, bro. <laughs> you drive the car, won't you? And so, and so, would you have your mind transformed into a radiant message that your Creator completely loves you, frees you, adores you, supports you? Would you want your mind 
So if I want to have that radiant message, do you know that I realize I have to give that radiant message? Mm -hmm. Because you can only have something by giving it. You can only have something by giving it, not getting it. You can only truly have what you give. So giving is asking. Mm -hmm. See, we don't know that. We think asking for something means, will you give me this? Mm -hmm. You know, the Course says, no, that's not asking. Asking to the universe is whatever you're giving because whatever you're giving is what you're requesting. Mm -hmm. So everything you're giving everybody all day is what the universe believes you're asking for all day. Mm -hmm. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. that, that would change what a person would give yeah. if they would think about that for a minute. You know, mm -hmm. that, that, that there's a line in the Course where he says, mm -hmm. when someone asks you something, before you answer them, realize that you're looking at an image of yourself asking for what you want and you should and you should answer them in terms of what you want to receive mm -hmm. because that's what you are always going to receive is what you're giving mm -hmm. so it's all, so I'm going to give you the answer that I'd like to receive mm -hmm. because you are never hearing what I'm saying directly anyway mm -hmm. so I can just let go of that idea of me communicating clearly and you're going to understand everything I say because you're giving everything I say the meaning right mm -hmm. so it's more important that I say what I want to remember Right. Because most people don't remember what you said no way. Right? right? So it's not like you're gonna they're gonna be pondering what you said for the rest of the week. It's not, I'm sorry. Your ego may be flattered by that that idea. But they're focused on how can I be more special? That's what they're thinking about. How can I have more? Yes, of that's something. Of something. Because that's what that's what the average person yes. is. Or, or who needs to change for me to get it? It says, you know, so it's not, we're not really as deep as we think we are, <laughs> you know, we're really not. It's kind of insulting when you find out just how undeep we are, <laughs> right? And then it says, now, why do I want to share a radiant message of love? It says, well, because I want to give that message to the lonely ones. The court said, well, who are the lonely ones? Everybody that's denying love, everybody that's denying God, everybody that thinks they're separate, they're the lonely ones. So the lonely ones need for me to say, you are completely loved, completely connected, completely joined, completely supported. I'm in the world to give a radiant message. I'll have a transformed mind when all I want to do is give that message. And that message is a message of love to those who don't believe that love exists and don't even believe that they're loved. Yeah. There are a few people like that. Yeah, just a few. There's just a few people like that <laughs> in the world. All right? And who makes this possible? The Course says, God makes it possible. Possible for what? For you to share a radiant message because your mind has been transformed. And a mind that's been transformed is a mind that is linked to God and love. Until you're talking to somebody who's linked to love, you're not talking to a transformed mind. You're talking to a regular fear-based mind. Yes. According to this. I'm, I'm going to keep saying according to this. Mm -hmm. Because I'm teaching the Course in Miracles. You could, you could bring up another book that you study, or you could bring up another path that you study and bring them into this class, but that wouldn't be what this class is about. It's not about another book or something else you studied somewhere else. What we're coming to do mm -hmm. is to hear what A Course in Miracles is teaching, mm -hmm. whether we agree with it or not. So what I want to do is like say to you that the only part of your mind that's real is the part of your mind that leaks you with love. And you should want your mind transformed so that the only message you're giving to all the lonely people in the world is that they're completely loved by their creator. And the next line says, and God makes this possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who? Yeah. God. God. The creator makes what possible? For you to have a transformed mind that only gives a message of radiant love. It say you made this yeah. possible. Say your creator made this possible. Mm -hmm. See, that's the problem when I don't believe in the creator. It's because I think I have to do it. Oh, <clears throat> you can tell you, you you can tell who's not in touch with their connection mm -hmm. usually because they'll say I I I I I I gotta do this I gotta do that I got to do this I got to do that I got to make this happen I got to go after this I got to create this I got to make this you hear a whole lot of eyes mm -hmm. then you're talking to a lonely one you're talking to someone who yes. is really probably going through ups and downs and don't always feel peace and connected. Mm -hmm. So the Course in Miracles is a what kind of teaching? A spiritual teaching. 
It's not a how can I manifest a car book. Okay, it's not a how can I be successful in the world book. It's not how can I have a soulmate book. It's not a how can I lose weight book. Even though my experience is everyone that focuses on the principles of the course ends up having everything that they need at the world and material level in a way that they wouldn't have never dreamed of. Sort of like that statement in the Bible, seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added. Mm -hmm. yep. But most people seek to everything that's added <laughs> and then, they, yeah. they, and then they, they seek God to get the added. On and, Sunday. Yeah. On Sunday. That, that, think about it. They're not really wanting the connection with source. Yeah. No. They're wanting something that they want the source to give them. Yes. So their interest in the source is only relative to the desires that they have in a material level, and they think that's the same as seeking God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a parent, you hate it when your kids do that. Mm -hmm. Don't seek me just to get a cop. Yeah. Wouldn't you like to have a relationship with me as your parent? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you come to me only when you want when something? You that's, now, I'm not saying God operates with that attitude, but you can see that that's not really seeking me. That's the yeah. example I'm trying to make. Yeah. You're not really wanting a relationship with me if you want a relationship with what you think I can give you. Mm -hmm. And many people think that's seeking God. Mm -hmm. I want to manifest something, so now I'm in these spiritual classes because I'm lonely. And the Course is saying the only reason why you're lonely is because what? You do not know your connection to Source. So God is going to make it possible. Love is going to make it possible. He says, would you deny love's yearning to be known? So love actually is yearning for you. Freedom is actually yearning for you. Abundance is really yearning for you. Happiness is yearning. Check that word out. Yearn. Your good is yearning for you. Your good is, I don't want you. I don't want you so bad. I'm your good. I want you to think about you all the time. You ghosted me. Call me. Call me. You, you ghosted me. That's right. He says, you yearn for love as love yearns for you. You yearn for God as God yearns for you. This is forever changeless. He says, that's why you're not ever really satisfied, because nothing less than real love will ever satisfy you. He says, that's why we keep running around searching for so many things. It's because it's impossible for you to be satisfied with anything less than what you really deserve. And so we're constantly giving ourselves less than what we deserve. And the Course says that's why people are always never satisfied with anything they get, because you deserve more than anything you give yourself. Okay? And then it says, except then the immutable. What is the immutable? That love is always yearning for you. That God is always yearning. That everything you desire in your heart wants you. Mm -hmm. See, I, that's in my mind. I'm like going, I want people that want me. I don't, I don't pursue people that don't want me. Right. Let that go. Whereas the time I did. Yeah. That was almost like the prerequisite. Yes. You had to not want me. Right. <laughs> and then that's when I wanted you. Yes, yes, yes. And now as I love myself more, when I didn't love myself as much, I lived from the, the action of opposites attract. Mm -hmm. So I was always trying to get somebody that had the qualities I thought I didn't have, and I would call them, we're going to compliment each other. <laughs> right? That was, the, that, was the, that was the way I fooled myself. Yeah. Now as you feel your own wholeness and you love yourself, and you know what you want, and you know what's important. What's important? I want to be around someone who also wants to radiate the message of love. I want to be around someone who's trying to learn that God and love makes it possible. I want to be around someone that's yearning for me as much as I yearn for them, and yearning for God as much as they yearn for me. See, I'm, this book is telling me exactly what to be on the lookout for. Oh, yeah, I want a love that doesn't change, that I can always depend on. It's not based on my behavior and the rules that the person is made up for how I should be in order to receive their love. See, I'm, I'm, I, I got a checklist that's going like this, right? And then I'm whole enough that if they don't show up, I enjoy my company. So, I'm, so I can wait patiently because I don't think there's anything missing in my life because I don't have a special relationship. Matter of fact, there was more things missing in my life when I had a special relationship, like friends and happiness and, and freedom and fun and doing what the hell I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it without somebody trying to. So I had a, I was missing stuff in it. Yes. Right. right? And sometimes when I get really tired of peace, I seek another one. Okay. Now. 
Because if I go into a relationship with the attitudes that the world taught me, I'm going to have exactly the same experience of the next relationship as I had in the past, with which is this other person is supposed to change to make me happy. And they're supposed to give me all their attention to the exclusion of everybody else exclusively. And their purpose on earth is to make me happy. And in, in return, they may get some good and not so good sex, maybe. Yes. If it's a special love relationship, yes. you need to get Sorry. up on that too. You, make it, you know, if you want to be a person's everything and you want them to focus all their attention on you to the exclusion of everybody else in the world of that same sex, you need to be producing. You need to be a really fun partner. You need to be really smart and interesting. If you want fidelity as you define fidelity, the person just focusing on you. Well, what you, what you. <laughs> You're supposed to be there every day. I'm, I'm supposed to be your experience of men for the rest of your life to the exclusion of any other man. That's a lot of pressure to put on me. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure to put on yourself. You know, so my, my personal attitude in relationships is, is there something you want to experience that I don't actually give you as a result of who I, have, I am authentically? I free you to have that experience with whoever can give it to you, male or female. That's my attitude. Takes a ton of pressure on me. I ain't going to ski. <laughs> okay, so if you need a partner to skis, and you, now you're mad at me because I don't ski, and now you're trying to make me ski, and if I loved you, I'd ski, then uh, I'm the wrong person for you. But I am going to say, go get you a ski partner. Yes. Go, I don't care as a man or woman. If I love you and we love each other and our relationship is real, I'm not terrified about what's going to happen. Sorry, I'm not insecure. So therefore, go ski, my darling. Ski. Ski on. Ski on. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you're afraid, if you're insecure, then what I just said is alarming. That, so you know what you need to work on. And guess what? The universe can be kind enough to send you someone just as insecure as you are, who needs the same boundaries you do, who needs the same agreements you do, and you can renegotiate those agreements at any time. So whatever way you be, doesn't mean you have to always be that way. Mm -hmm. All right? So don't try to get someone who gives unlimited love when you know you have unlimited jealousy and possessiveness. <laughs> <laughs> because they're going to drive you berserk. Yes. Listen to me now. I'm just getting real with you. A, a, a conscious being will not be limited. A conscious being is going to accept their freedom. They won't play any of the jealousy games, any of the possessive games, any of that. You need to be with an equal. Does that make sense to everybody? You know, if you're jealous as hell, you need to have somebody else who can relate to that. Right? Then y'all can work through that together. Right? But if you're with somebody who has no jealousy issues whatsoever, which means they're going to express themselves, and you are freaking out because then that person... I ain't hanging out with Jesus. I cannot walk water, will not produce 5,000 loaves of bread. And all that. So I'd have a huge inferiority complex if I was hanging out with Buddha. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to even go there. That's why, I, that's why I hang out with all my friends. That's why I'm with y'all. And I, and I, you know, I had a birthday, uh, experience a birthday gathering last night. There was they didn't, they thought a cyclone of love hit yes. that place. They didn't. Yes. They, they was yes. like, they was like, what in the world <laughs> was that that came through here? You know, because uh, yep. of the amount of extension and love and joy. They hadn't seen that. You know, it's mm -hmm. like I would say the first two hours we had the club. I said the first two hours. It was full, but everybody that was there beside us was just sitting there yeah, watching. Right. It was like they, literally, it's like they were like they was watching like it's like they were going, you know, uh -huh. like why? Because because people when they see love and they see light and they see people hugging and laughing and playing and joining of all races, all colors, it's so out of the realm of their normal reality that the court says, in the presence of love, the fearful mind becomes immobilized. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it it literally becomes. <laughs> and then gradually because there's no judgment yeah. and we're just no doing drama. our thing no drama giving up to love you go yeah. oh here's one more yeah. there's two more yeah. and then before it was over you, we had a circle of people dancing and people getting in the middle and there was somebody jumped in there that we didn't even know he yeah. jumped in there he was going for it. Right. because 
because he felt safe yes. after a while they saw loving people see the best way to teach according to the course is to demonstrate it talking all this love stuff where you still act like everybody else in your behavior ain't teaching nobody your being a secret lover don't mean nothing your being conscious as you think of consciousness but at the same time there's nothing about your behavior that's more open or more loving or more peaceful you're not a good teacher, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're here, we are here to be the light of the world. Mm -hmm. We are here to be the truth in the world. Mm -hmm. We are here to demonstrate what we're reading about so that people know that it actually is possible and it actually exists. Then God is not invisible. God is now visible through us. Mm -hmm. Through us. See, we got a bunch of people in the world sitting back waiting going, when everybody else is loving, then I'm going to be loving. When you prove to me you you can be, uh, you, I can trust you to be my friend, then I'm going to be your friend. See, those people do not know the truth because they still think their reality is not a reflection of their own consciousness. See, a conscious being knows it'll be as much love in your world as you're willing to give. You're not waiting for somebody to show up. You know if you're a conscious being that you need to have the qualities that you want someone else to have. And then you attract a person of those qualities because you have those qualities. Mm -hmm. An unconscious person is always asking for people who have qualities the opposite of the ones they're expressing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like I'm an afraid person saying I want the most loving person to come to me. <laughs> I'm cheap as hell saying I want abundance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm too poor to pay attention. You know what I'm saying? So, it's, it's, so we, again, we're thinking in terms of, uh, I want a peaceful person, but I'm going off in anger as soon as a person does something I don't like. And they don't understand, sorry, you will never attract a loving person to you when you are always raising hell yourself. And that's what makes this path tough. Yeah. You know, Even though the Course is saying to us, your creator will give you the love even when you're not capable of doing it. That's why you need to turn to the creator right. because it's capable. That love is capable of supporting you regardless of how you are. Your brothers and sisters aren't. Because no. yeah. y'all are all here because you are all the same. Yes. You all don't know how to do real unconditional yeah. love. So it's not even fair to put that responsibility mm -hmm. on each other. Right. It's really not. I, you can't hurt me because I don't expect you all's love to be consistent under all circumstances. Uh -huh. I don't. I have to be frank with you. Uh -huh. I don't. I know that you have gaps in your love uh -huh. that you yes. call fear yes. and upset. Yes. Right? And we all do. Yes. Right? So therefore, <clears throat> by me recognizing that you're not aware of the part of your mind that's only linked with love, then when you act unloving, it's easier for me to forgive it and release it because I didn't expect you to be perfect in that way in the first place. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Okay, so then it says, God makes this possible. Would you deny love's yearning to be known? You learn, you yearn for love, and love yearns for you, and, and this is forever changing. Accept the, the, uh, the immutable. Accept that love is yearning for you, and nothing can change that. Your creator wants to love you, and nothing can change that. Now, why don't I know that? Because I don't feel the same way about my creator. I don't yearn for my creator. Yeah. My creator isn't my number one priority. Yeah. So therefore, I don't, when I say that, I read that, that's empty words. Mm -hmm. Because it's not what I want. Mm -hmm. Right? And so the Course says, leave the world of death behind. What? Leave the world of death behind. And... Return quietly to heaven. Let, let's take that word heaven. That's a loaded word based on what I heard growing up, right? Mm -hmm. The Course is always talking about love or fear. So you just substitute the word love. Mm -hmm. Because that's what heaven is. Mm -hmm. Heaven is love. Mm -hmm. And then the world of death, would that be the world of love? No, that would be the world of fear. Mm -hmm. So it's saying leave the world of fear behind and, require, and return how? Quietly to love. Leave the desert. But I love that line in there when he talks about uh, somebody starved and emaciated, been on the desert for a long time, mm -hmm. and when they're finally rescued and you show up, they don't immediately jump up off the desert and mm -hmm. run around the circle because they're glad you showed up. Mm -hmm. It takes a while for them to realize they've been rescued and to be nursed back to health, right? right. But they've been rescued. Right. But the rest, okay, that's us. The rescue yeah. has happened. Yeah. But we're not at the stage we can jump up and run around yet. Yeah. So don't think just because... The book is telling us we're going to have unlimited love. 
and we're going to have unlimited forgiveness and unconditional love just because we just heard that that means all of us are going to walk out today going, I love everybody and mean it. No, you are on the desert, just been rescued. It's going to take a while for you to be nursed back to health. So be gentle with yourself in the process of healing. Stop being hard on yourself just because you heard the way you're going to experience your life, which is in total love mm -hmm. and total joy. Uh, Stop being hard. I have had such a transformation in my relationship with my children and my family that the, the, that stuff that people tend to say is the hardest to see the truth happen, that core stuff. Mm -hmm. And what I loved about the change was it wasn't it didn't have anything to do with me. Mm -hmm. And I found out that's how change happens. <laughs> <laughs> True change don't have nothing to do with me. If I really want something to work, I need to get out of the way. <laughs> Right? Yeah. So I'm glad I can't tell you the formula I use to try to change the people around me other than one thing that came from directly from the Course of Miracles. I started telling myself, my son didn't need to be different in order for me to be happy. My daughter doesn't need to be different in order for me to be happy. My, my, my friends, my relatives, my partners, no one needs to be different in order for me to be happy. And I'm here to give and receive love. And I'm going to ask Source, what should, I, what should I say? Who should I say it to? What is it that it wants me to do? And where is it that it wants me to go? I, use the, I just use those simple approaches from A Course in Miracles. And I watched all of my relationships transform. And I knew it must be the truth because that's the opposite of everything I used to do. And it's the opposite of everything I see other people who are unhappy doing. They are always complaining about how somebody else needs to be different or some circumstance or situation needs to be different and then they will be happy. And I did, according to the course, just the opposite of that and I got the result. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm special, I just did something different. Mm -hmm. And it said I didn't have to believe it, so that took all the pressure off me, mm -hmm. right? If I don't have to believe it, then there's nothing to keep me from saying it. Mm -hmm. And saying the truth is indicative of my willingness to have God make this possible. Just like that paragraph said. That's how you allow the creator to make something happen. You do what you're told. Which is to state the truth even if you don't believe it. Who can't do that? You have to be the biggest dunce on earth <laughs> if you can't say something without believing it. We do it all day long. We do it all day long. We say stuff we don't believe. But then when it comes to the truth, the back goes, well, I can't say that all the time. I absolutely believe it. You don't care about that when it comes to nobody else. That's right. So why is it yeah. so important now that you study the truth? Yeah. That you have to be absolutely accurate and mean every word of it. You tell somebody you like their dress, you hate it. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't have a problem. You know, you go right to, oh, yeah, honey, that's the best dress. Lord, I don't know that <laughs> word. You know? And that's what this book is saying. Say the truth. Because if it's true, it's still true. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whether you believe it or not. Mm -hmm. You love freedom, mm -hmm. abundance, is yearning for you. Mm -hmm. right. And that will never change. If, if I love you, I will not stop loving you. Right. Mm -hmm. Any love that's ever changed was not love. It was specialness. Mm -hmm. That's all it was. This was a person who was special to you for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it ended. Yeah. What ended? The specialness. Yeah. How do I know? Because now you're with somebody else and you're totally happy. <laughs> <laughs> My specialness is over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. So if you love each other and the relationship shifts, you still feel the same way about each other, but you're just relating to each other in a different way. Yes. So the relationship was real. Yes. I have real relationships with my so-called exes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Use it because they ex me out, I ex them out. That's what we call it, exes. <laughs> exactly. Okay? Out. But we are not, I don't have to avoid them in King Super. I don't have to, like, feel bad because I might run it, run it twice because the relationship was real. Mm -hmm. The love was real. The form we expressed it in changed. And all forms 
in all relationships are going to continue to change. Even the ones that you like, you've got to let them change. Mm -hmm. You have to let your relationships change within the relationship yes. to stay interested in each other. You're bored because you won't let each other change. Yes. <laughs> You're so scared that they need to stay a certain way all the time and then you get bored. Mm -hmm. You know everything they're going to do before they do it. <laughs> Can you feel me? Yes. Yeah. You know every little thing they're going to do. Why? That the, 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 the ego said, well, that makes me feel secure because that's what I can count on. No, what you need to count on are the universal laws of God and the universal laws of truth. That's what you need to count on, which is what? They are going to change. That's a universal law. You can count on that. And you're going to suffer to the degree in which you don't accept that we're evolving and growing and changing and nothing you can do to, you can do to stop that, thank God. So what kind of relationship do you want? You want one that the love is changeless, the love, you, you yearn for the love with each other, that you're going to let love make this possible. You're going to be giving each other a radiant message of God's love. Mm -hmm. It's right here in the page. It says, there is nothing of value here. Nothing. It didn't say... It was pretty definite, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did say nothing. Didn't I say there was something? Didn't I say there was something of value here? It said there was nothing of value here. In other words, there's nothing of value in fear. Yes. That's what it's saying. Yes. There's nothing of value in fear. There's nothing of value in a fearful world. There's not that I do not want fear to be my life. So therefore, I will see nothing of value in fear. fear. I don't want to have a mate I'm afraid of, yeah. a job I'm afraid of, friends I'm afraid of. I don't want fear is not what is my goal. Right. All right. I would always be the least honest with the person that was the most special to me. Because I was afraid of upsetting them or lose them. My friends would know everything I was thinking, feeling, and doing. Yep. I would just tell them all of my thoughts. My friends, we knew what was happening. The special person, I weighed everything I would say, depending on how important that specialness was. Don't look at me like y'all don't do that. Don't, don't y'all dare look, out look at me like, what are you saying? You know, you probably think twice about the things you say to the person that's most special to you than the person you don't. That's why when somebody no longer sees you as special, they'll tell you what they really think about oh, you. Yeah. Because they're no longer afraid to lose yeah. you. But, so let me tell you what I thought about that Course in Miracles. What <laughs> 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 I really thought about that Course in Miracles. I was, it's interesting yeah. when you get oh, the yeah. back end. Oh, see, yeah. now you're not interested no more. Yes. Yep. You know, so everything they did to make you special is gone. Yes. I don't care what they were doing. And then all of a sudden you see how the person would be if they weren't trying to be special. Ooh, yeah. Then you get a more authentic expression of who that person is. Yeah. It's when you're not special. Yeah. Not when you're special. When you're special, you get to act. Mm -hmm. When it's love, you get the authentic person. Yeah. So the Course says, there is nothing of value here in the world of fear but in death. But everything of value there in love and freedom and oneness, listen to the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the voice for God and truth, that connection to source that's in each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the truth in every one of us. It says right here, listen, uh oh. Did it say listen? Uh -oh. I knew it was a catch. Yeah, I knew it was a catch, brother. It said listen to the loving spirit. Uh -oh. And what? And to God through the loving spirit. Okay, let me get this straight. I listen to God through love. I listen to that which created me through love. I listen to love through love. And that's why it says that... God makes this possible because the part of me that's afraid that thinks I'm separate from you all, 
That is not the part of me that's going to be telling me the truth, loving thoughts. So that part of me that loves me needs to be in charge of my life, not the people sitting in this room. Because we're the doubters. We're the part of the mind that's the doubters. And he's saying, but there's another part of your mind that absolutely knows, that is absolutely already loving. Not that you got to put it in you. It's in you. And I want to tap into the part of you that's sane. And I want to tap into the part of you that knows how to love me. And I can love you. But I've got to have faith that is there somewhere. And I become aware of it in you as I become aware of it in me. I have control over me. So I'm going to invest my energy in letting go of my blocks so that you all can feel my love so I'll finally know the love that's in you. That's how it happens. That's how it happens. And then the part of you that doesn't believe you're loving, called the ego, is going to try to do everything it can to convince you it's crazy for you to think you can be loved, crazy for you to think you can have loving people, crazy for you to think you can be abundant and be peaceful and loving all the time. It's going to bring up every relationship from the past, every hurt from the past, everything that happened to you when you were a child, things that happened to you when back in a whole nother lifetime. It's going to go for everything it can. That part of you that wants you to think none of this is true is going to do everything in the beginning to make you afraid of this, run away from this, not study this. Don't fall for it. But you will stop falling for it when you reach your limit of pain and not a moment before unless you consciously make that decision. There are two kinds of things the Course says that makes people change. Number one, you got it so good and you're experiencing so much love and peace that you will never go back to what you used to do because the difference is so great. And so you'll keep on moving toward it. The kind of relationships I have now, the kind of friends I have now, the kind of connections I have now, they're so peaceful and loving overall. I could never go back to rejecting and blaming and going off on everybody else and holding them responsible and wanting people to give me what I'm not giving. Uh -uh, my life is too good for that. I ain't going back to that crap. Okay? And then he says the other thing that makes a person change is just the sure pain of the circumstances that they're going through. They just go, I just can't take it no more. And that's the most popular way. Yes, yes. <laughs> because people will keep doing stuff over and 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 over until they reach their limit. And some people have limits of pain that are beyond my comprehension. Yes. <laughs> I have met people that I'm like going, what in the hell does it take to make you do anything different? Have you ever said you met people like you? I mean, they, I mean, they got so much drama, so much hell, and you go, "What does it take to wake your butt up?" But you know that it will happen yes, yes, because right. nobody's so special they'll be left out. Yeah, that's None right. of us will be left out. That's right. That's good news. Yeah, it is. And then say somebody you want to fry him, what you think of as hell? Then that's not turning you on at all. <laughs> I used to get to what about? Hitler. I used to always hear that back in the beginning. I used to say, I've been Hitler in about 20 years now, but Hitler was so important in my life. So I used to do a class. It's called Hitler. Because everybody would want to use the most extreme examples. I'm talking about don't cuss somebody out for changing lanes in front of you. And you go, what about Hitler? I'm like, well, maybe this work up to Hitler. Okay, so it'll take a while for us to get up. Don't start at Hitler. Don't start at the person that molested you. Don't start at the person that hurt you. Don't start at the person that did the most damage. Don't, when it's a book talk about forgiving, leave those people at the end of the line, please. The mother that abused you, don't think this book is saying start with her. And that's exactly where people start. They always start with the most trying situation or circumstance. And I'm saying, can you not want to kill somebody for taking your park in space? Can you get, can you start there? Yeah. yeah. And then it says, listen to the Holy Spirit and to God through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, which is your loving self, your true self, speaks to you. And who does your true self speak to you of? It speaks of you to you. And that's what I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. I'm speaking of you to you. Mm -hmm. That you are loving, you deserve love. Love is yearning for you, the only part of you that is real. That I am the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 
You are the Holy Spirit for me when you talk to me that way. So I now know when someone is talking to me from love and the Holy Spirit, and when I'm talking to somebody, I don't need to listen to a doggone thing that's coming out of their mouth because nothing that they're saying is reflecting the truth. Because if they're not speaking to me of love and my value, then they are not the Holy Spirit talking to me. And people go, well, how can I tell if it's my ego or the Holy Spirit? <laughs> if it's your ego, it doesn't give you not the slightest bit of fulfillment and peace and joy. Yeah. And if it's not coming to you from your true self, it always it gives you some form of peace without attack. Mm -hmm. It's not rocket science here. It's simple. It's simple, but it's, it seems hard because it's so different. Mm -hmm. It seems hard because it's so different. It's not hard. It's just different. Mm -hmm. And how do you know you're hearing something new? Because what's new is different. Mm -hmm. So people say, tell me something new. I'm all ready for something new. Give me something new. Then you give them something different. They go, whoa, that's different. <laughs> I want you to do what, I, what you need to be saying what I've already believed all the time. I'm coming to this class and I believe in hell and you're saying there's no hell. But I said I want to hear something different. That's different. You see what I mean? So be ready to feel resistance if it's truly something that's really different. Be glad. You go, oh, I'm really, oh, I got some contraction here. Oh, that kind of, oh, he said that and I, oh, I feel that. Ooh. Okay, that's how you know you're hearing something new. And the part of you that wants you to suffer, the part of you that wants you to suffer, the part of you that hates your freaking guts, that they want you to die and wants to kill you. <laughs> there is a part of the course yes. that's, that's like that. Yes, there so is. there's a part of you that hates your guts and wants yes. you out of here. Yeah. And that's the part of you that creates mm -hmm. death. Yeah. Yep. And then fails mm -hmm. in that too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because you don't die. You an eternal being because you have an eternal creator, and you think just because the body goes, that means that person is dead. But I'm gonna tell you something. Right now they're broadcasting on YouTube, and I could pick it up on my phone. But if you destroyed that phone, I could not communicate with YouTube or text. Does that mean it doesn't still exist? No, it just means the communication device is broken and gone. That's your body. Your body is a communication device. So therefore, when your body's gone, unless a person is spiritually aware, they can't talk to you anymore. Right. But the person that's spiritually aware can still communicate with you. There are plenty of people who still are in communication with people who are supposed to be beyond the body. They don't say anything about it because people who don't, don't know anything think they're crazy. I said again, people who don't know anything think they're crazy. There are people who have all types of abilities and powers and realizations that you'll never hear them say to you because they're aware enough to know it to frighten you. I do it all the time and you do it all the time. It's things you will not say to your friends and relatives because of the way you think that it will impact the way that they relate to you. Right? So, so don't you think for a second that people are doing the same thing with you? <laughs> to you, to them, you are unaware. Yeah. I'm unaware. See, we, we have to think we're at the top of the chain. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I like to use the analogy of, you know, you, you, you looking over a ledge and you looking down at the other ledges below you. That's what we think we're doing. I'm, I'm up here and I got to deal with my mom and my dad who are not too hard as me. And and see, but what we don't do, what we don't do is this. <laughs> we don't realize we're alleged. Yeah. And, to, and to our higher selves, we're the ones that go, ooh, Lord. What God? What did you do? What did you do? You just up to the point that you're thinking you create your experience? Oh, man. Wow. You just now begin to accept your innocence? Man. My God! <laughs> I've met people that were parts of myself that were so much greater in their ability to give love and freedom that I would say to myself, if I was them, I couldn't, I wouldn't even do what they're doing. <laughs> I, wouldn't loan, I wouldn't loan a stranger my car. Uh I wouldn't drop a stranger off at my house if they never, you never met before say, I'll see you later, which uh -huh. people have done. I've had things, traveling and teaching, doing what I do, meeting the kind of people I've met for 30-something years. Mm -hmm. You will meet people that are so far beyond you and their capacity to trust mm -hmm. and their capacity to give love that it's almost incomprehensible <laughs> yeah. to you. And that's the way you are to people who are yes. not 
able to deal with you. Because yes. yep. I've had that happen over and over again. I'm like, you just met me. You don't know me from anybody. You drop me off at your house, and then you go, I'll see you later. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I was the right person yes. to be dropped off at their house because I wouldn't steal anything. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So they on a level of consciousness that they attract people to them that wouldn't rob them. Yes. See, everything is consciousness. Everything is, And what is consciousness? Consciousness is your level of interpretation. As the Court says, consciousness is the level of, it's, 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 you, tell, you tell me how you see things and interpret things, and now I know your level of consciousness. That's what your level of consciousness. If you think you're a victim and everybody does everything to you and you're just a body and you have nothing to do with what could be created in your life whatsoever, that's your level of consciousness. It's not a judgment. That's just your level of consciousness. And your level of consciousness determines what you see, perceive, and experience. That is the law. Mm -hmm. So if you want to change your life, change your consciousness. If you really want to do it fast, let that which loves you that's above you change it for you, which it can do if you had any willingness for it to do it. Just like if I said to you, uh, if you're willing, you don't have to pick up this stool. I'll come bring it to you, Anna, and then you can sit on it. Or Anna can go pick up the stool herself. So don't think for a second it's not possible for things to be done for you. But Anna would have to believe there's an earl that could pick up the stool and bring it to her. So if you still want to have a relationship with that which created you will do things for you, then you need to take the time to get rid of the blocks to knowing there is a creator that can pick up your stool and bring it to you. It's nothing worse than a bad stool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> As a matter of fact, that's how they tell whether you're healthy or not. Right? Right? So don't forget. Don't forget. So it says, Holy Spirit speaks of you to you. Love will speak of you to you. Your true self will speak of you to you. And here's the last line. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm going to speak to you. He's telling us what this is our script. Mm -hmm. This is your line. He says, there is no guilt in you. Mm -hmm. Now, I had relationships, and I was, an, I was a person that used to try to make people feel guilty through my anger in order to get them to work my will. Anybody in here ever done that? No. <laughs> Anybody here ever done that? Yes. Oh, yeah, twice. Okay. Right. That's been the times, Greg. I am surprised. You've done it twice. Oh my God. Okay. He's being so honest. Yeah, he's being so honest today, isn't he? Wow. Cow. <laughs> if there was a God of lightning. <laughs> I just see a ponytail, whatever. <laughs> it was a Greg there a minute ago, right? <laughs> so what is somebody that's going to love me, going to tell me, they're going to say, Earl, you're not guilty. You're not guilty. You're not guilty. You may make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You may make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mistakes are for correction, loving correction. But you're not born in guilt. You're not born in sin. You weren't, you're not flawed just by virtue of being born, which is what I learned as a child. Yeah. You, know, you, are, you are flawed. You are sinful. You are bad. Why? You were born. Okay. Boy, that's low self-esteem right. started early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just show up. They go, oh, my God. You are a sinner. <laughs> but I ain't done it with pee. <laughs> you know, so you be like, what did I do? I didn't do it right. I'm, I'm wrong with my pamphlets? What's up? Man? <laughs> you know, think about that. Then you buy into that, right? Yeah. And then so you have a so you have a core belief that you are flawed. Right off the bat. Yes, right. And not only regular guilt, if you grow up, if you grow up in Chris, fundamental Christianity like I did, mm -hmm. it wasn't regular guilt. This was guilt because I killed God's son, yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. That's Literally, yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. Right? Yes. That's, that's a lot of guilt to lay on a kid. Yes. And then you go, and then you go, then you then you one badass baby. That's right. Then you go, then you go, then you go, then you go well, uh, oh my God. Okay. So therefore, and when did I do this? Two thousand years before you were born. <laughs> What? 2,000 years before you were born, you killed God's son. We don't believe in reincarnation, by the way. Yeah, right. We can't use that as an excuse either. Exactly. 
And then you go, and it's a child, and you go, now this sounds really weird. <laughs> now some kids, yeah. now some of us, we're born, we yeah. just, we buy the medicine. Right. We buy it. Yeah. And whatever yeah. you tell us, gobble, gobble, gobble. Yeah. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Yeah. gobble. And now we miserable, yeah. but gobble, 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 gobble. Yeah. And then there's some kids, like you. Like us. Yeah, they go, Mm, something don't quite fit about that. <laughs> right? Mm, I don't know. And then I go to my mama, Mommy, <laughs> y'all said that Adam and Eve was the first man and woman. <laughs> and they had two children, Cain and Abel. But y'all also said they married somebody. <laughs> Who did they marry if they was the children of the only first two people that was ever born? Don't you, don't oh, you yeah. question the Bible! Oh, yeah. <laughs> You better not question nothing. And then even if you grew up Jewish or something else, you still had your own personal oh. brand of guilt now. Don't, don't mean just because you didn't do the fundamental Christian thing. I got plenty of Jewish friends that got mama's heads in the ovens right now. For, <laughs> for, you know, what they doing oh, that they mama don't want them to do. Just go ahead and marry him. Don't worry me. Just, just close the door behind you when my head is in the oven. <laughs> but feel innocent about your wedding night, I tell you. <laughs> So the Course is saying to us, in the form of unconscious guilt is a request for punishment. Yes. People don't realize when you say, I feel guilty, it says to the universe, you're saying, punish me, punish me, because it's through punishment I'm absolved of my guilt, right? You do something, I was a kid, I got spankings, we were really good parenting when I grew up. And so I don't care what I did after my mama spanked me, we was cool. I mean, it would be just like that. She was, I'm cool with mom, mom cool with me. Because what? I got punished yeah. for my error. Yeah. Don't you think for a second you're not still running it down oh, yeah. in your own uh, uh, psyche? Yeah. Yeah. Every time you feel guilty, only it's not your external parent doing it. Now it's your internal yeah. ego that's doing it. Yeah. So I hate me. I think I'm bad. I'm going to choose the worst relationship partner I could ever come up with so that I can go through the pain of the punishment I think I deserve. I'm going to get addicted to something to punish myself. I'm going to be on a job that when the alarm goes off, I want to throw the clock across the room because that job is a form of punishment. I'm going to have a bank account that the bank is calling me and saying, will you please close your account? <laughs> <laughs> You're really using up a lot of our resources that other people could use with your low balance. You know what I'm saying? People don't realize that's a form of self-punishment. Yeah. People who think they have no guilt. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing more important than the next line. I'm going to stop here. But this, this next two sentences, I want to make sure you hear this because it's so important. It says, there's no guilt in you and God is blessed in you and you're blessed in God. What does that mean? There's no guilt in you and you are blessed in love and love is blessed in you and you are blessed in love. Then it says, everyone here has a what kind of part? Special part. You want it to be special? Then you have a special part. There's a part for you to play in this divine plan and nobody can do it the way you do it. Every one of us has a special function. And if your life sucks, you're not doing what you came here to do. And you didn't come here to get a house. You did not come here to be the president of a company. You did not come here to find your soulmate. You didn't come here for that. You, these things can happen. That is not why you were born. You were born to give the radiant message of God's love to everybody. Until you believed it yourself. Now you be, you'll be shocked to see the universe take care of you in ways you could have never imagined when you start to do these simple things I'm saying right now. And it says right here, you have a special part to play in the atonement, which is the undoing of fear. Right. Then it says, but the message, each one of us has a special part. He says, but the message given to each one is always the same. The message you're supposed to give is that the child of God is guiltless. Mm -hmm. That who you really are as love is innocent. Mm -hmm. See, if you grow up in a world that culture says we're guilty and sinful, then obviously the way out is that you're innocent and sinless. Yes. you got to say the opposite, even if you don't believe it. And if those of you who think you are all open-minded and metaphysical, yet if you feel the slightest bit of, eh, as you hear me say this, that lets you know you still believe in sin and you still believe in guilt. So much so that if a guy stands in front of you and says that's not true, <laughs> even though you think you're beyond it. Yeah. Which shows you you're not. 
beyond it. But what's wrong with act like the, if none of the things that I told you are true, let's say everything I told you is a bunch of crap, you still have a better life if you live That's this way. Right. Mm -hmm. Think about it. If yeah. nothing I'm saying is true, would you have a better life if you took responsibility? Yeah. yeah. Would you have a better life sure. if you were treating people in a more loving way? Yeah. For sure. So even if it's not true, you'd have a better life. Mm -hmm. So the Course is saying right here, the message is always the same. God's Son is guiltless. Each one teaches the message differently. Each one learns this message differently. But until you teach it, until you learn it, mm -hmm. you're going to suffer the, dim, the pain of dim awareness that your true function remains unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. So what does that just say to me? I'll say it again. You got one message to give to everyone you know. You don't have to say it verbally. You do not have to say it verbally. And I'll tell you why. Would you like to know? Yes. yes. Because if a person is really guilty and they believe that guilt is good, and you tell them they're innocent, they'll spend the next 15 minutes trying to convince you that you're wrong in saying that about them. So, so you will make them focus more on their guilt instead of less. Right. Try. Right. Tell, tell, tell somebody, you're innocent, you're innocent, you're innocent, you're really innocent, but you're really innocent. They go, no, I'm not really innocent. You don't really know what I did prom night. You don't know. Okay, a last night, right? Right? And then you talk, and then you walk up to a person, especially last night. Tell me I'm innocent, tell me I'm innocent. Tell me when I'm innocent, tell me I was innocent. Y'all were out there, out there. That's right. If I'm guilty, all y'all guilty. <laughs> <laughs> that's right okay but if you tell them you're guilty you're sinful you're guilty you're sinful that's what happened to some of us yeah. you're guilty then we go no wait a minute I'm not that guilty I'm not that bad see see, the ego establishes its individuality by always disagreeing yes. so the way you make the course is the way you make yourself separate from me is you point out the differences between us so if I say up you say down if I said left, you said right. You, have you had those kind of people in your life? I don't care what you say. It could be something they said. Yes. And, just, and you can say it 15 minutes later and they would disagree with you. For no other reason than they have to be different to establish their separation. So that's why God is quiet. It's because the more conscious you become, the quieter you become. Because you know you can do through the mind what you used to have to do through the body. Yes. So yes. you'll know who you can say the truth to. Mm -hmm. Spirit will reveal to you that you can, mm -hmm. that part of you that needs to, the part of me that needs to talk this the way I'm talking it, mm -hmm. boom. Yes. It's happening right now. Yes. It's happening with my friends. Mm -hmm. It's happening on my Facebook Live. Yes. But that don't mean I'm going to walk into Walmart and go, oh, you stomach guns are innocent. <laughs> y'all are guiltless. Yes. And that's the way you are. Because y'all, what happens when you're walking down the mall and you see somebody doing yeah. that? You go, yeah. <laughs> so you, so part of your spiritual growth is listening to your inner guidance that will tell you who to say stuff to. That's why you go. What do you want me to say? Who do you want me to say it to? Some people you don't say nothing verbally to, right? And you accomplish more with them because you don't engage their ego. There's some people I just don't talk to because I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> Oh, I tell you who's the wrong person to help. The wrong person that God has not sent you to help is the person you feel burnt out and drained trying to help. Yes. You are the last person that's supposed to be helping that person. Right. right. The person that the Spirit sends you to help, you'll be zippity zippity <laughs> <laughs> Oh my. I came, I want to help you today. <laughs> Plenty of purdy coming your way. <laughs> That's right. That's what I'm saying. And then the per right person said, What? Bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> Bring it on, black man. Come on. Come on. I'm ready. You know, you know see, this. Works and there's not a thing that I've said today that you couldn't practice today. There's not one single thing I've said today that you all couldn't do today, and that's the way the truth is. It's always something you can do now if you want to. All this stuff y'all telling me, anybody else tells you about it, all the stuff that's got to happen before they can have what they want. Mm -hmm. After I take ten more years of school, then I can be happy. 
you know, when I, you know, anytime you tell me about anything in the future that needs to happen, I know you are seeking something that won't satisfy you. Mm -hmm. You may not know it yet yeah. because you're busy working on it so hard. <laughs> Everything that's real is now. Everything that's valuable is now. Everything that is love and joy is now. You can have it now. Everything you're making up that won't give you eternal joy is everything you tell me that you can't do now. That meal you're going to eat later on today doesn't fill your stomach now. So you know it's not the ultimate truth about you. The ultimate truth about you is you won't even need to eat one day. Amen. There are plenty of beings on this earth mm -hmm. that don't eat. Yeah. They know how to breathe in the life force that they need. They're called breatharians. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but then people say, that sounds, that's weird. Wow. Yeah, but you're weird to your friends yes. who don't know where you're coming from. They go, that's pretty. He's weird. And then we'll still do the same thing and think it's different mm -hmm. because it's us. Yes. So then we we'll turn around and say, when we hear about something like a breatharian, we'll go, Ugh, that's so weird. But then we'll tell our friends, you can visualize this and focus on this and manifest. They go, ew, that's weird. So you need to have the stuff that's said to you that's weird to you. Yes. Then go for that. That's yes. your growth. Yes. It's the way out ideas that make you go, wow. You mean I can have love unconditionally all the time from everyone? Wow, I don't even know how you could do that. That's the direction for you to go. <laughs> because you need to you need to go toward the stuff that makes you go. Not the stuff you go, oh, okay, that's right. That's the way I already believe. That's right. That's, yeah, uh -huh. I agree. Yes, I agree. No, you need somebody to give you so much love, you go, oh, my God, I'm scared to death. I've been overwhelmed. I was having a person say that to me just the other day. It was like, oh, okay, wait a minute. Let me breathe. This is a lot. This is a lot of love. Let me, let me take a minute here. Let me let this in. That's what they were saying to me. And I, and I love that. I love that that person was conscious enough, wasn't rejecting it, saying, okay, wait a minute, this is, you are really being loving. And not only that, I'm feeling it. Uh-huh. Because nobody can defend against sincerity. Nobody, I don't care how ego they are. If you really master sincerity by being authentic, they know it. They know it. You know, if I was really coming from sincerity and love, a Ku Klux Klan would take me home for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I usually hate all black people, but I like you, Earl. Let me show you my cross. <laughs> take you back in the den and show you my... That's okay, I'll just hear about it. I don't want to, I don't want to push it. Give you no ideas. <laughs> That's right. All right, so that's the truth. What is the one message that we need to think even if we don't say? No. You're innocent. You're innocent. God's son is guiltless. And, and you don't have to believe it at first because it's true. Yeah. See, if it's true, it's true whether you believe it or not. And that's what I love about the truth. It's, it's more relaxing because, you know, it doesn't depend on me upholding it all the time. You know, but if it's not true, then I only can feel that way when I'm trying to make myself believe it. So belief is not as powerful as knowing. It's not as powerful as knowledge. So if you want to go fast, be willing for good things to happen to you that you don't understand how it happens. Be willing for things not to turn out the way you want them to. And realize your understanding isn't a powerful contribution to the truth of anything. Then you start to let the universe give you stuff because now you're not setting the condition that you've got to believe it. Mm -hmm. right? right? So you can receive more love than you can believe yeah. is possible for you. Mm -hmm. If you make your not having to ultimately believe it be necessary to you receiving it. Mm -hmm. And that's how you go to the next level of consciousness. The next level of consciousness is beyond belief. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's beyond belief. Belief is a stage, but in one day you've got to give up belief. Yeah. And trade it in for knowledge. I love you. Thank you for hearing this. My Holy Spirit. And some of you, some of you, it was nice seeing you, and I'll never see you again. And some of you, I look forward to the next time I see you. Okay. Those of you online, thank you for hanging in. Okay, so let's do the financial expression of appreciation. And I really appreciate you sharing with me as a full-time teacher. You're innocent. You're innocent no matter what you do. <laughs> okay? You're innocent no matter what. Amen. You're innocent no matter what. Thank you.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Those of you online, those of you online, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, please go to my website, earlpurdy.com. P-U-R-D-Y, earlpurdy.com. I'm hardcore, so I know that my appeal is not to the general public, because if you're doing it right, it's almost like the more people, the more the general public you reach with anything, the more you know it's diluted in some way. Yeah. And the more hardcore, authentic you are about anything, it may look like there's less bodies interested in it. So be, be aware of that. When you're being your most authentic self, it may not seem like there's gangs of people around you. But the people around you will be of such high quality that it would make up for the sheer quantity that your ego would think it would need. One real friend is worth 40. Yes. That's pretending that they really value you and they don't. Yes. So, so you're, you're going to be attracting real people yeah. into your life. Uh, I do three Facebook Live classes, so you can watch me even if you're not here. Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Mountain Time on the Earl Purdy page in, on Facebook. Thursdays at 7 p.m. Hardcore Course in Miracles that's geared to a course students. And of course, Sundays, where we, I'm still doing it live to give people an opportunity to come. So, so I'd invite you to still come yeah. if you want to still have this happen yes. this way. Because yes. there's no reason to be here if nobody's showing up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what I'm saying? I can just stay at home and put the camera up and do it from yes. there. Yeah. So I'm doing this for us. I need you as much as you need me. Right. You know, so those of you watching, you're here. You don't, don't take me for granted because I'm in Denver. Right. Stop taking people for granted in your life. Just because they're there. Just because they're there. Yeah. Because the court says, you want to be guaranteed to lose something? Yeah. What you think of as losing something, don't appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't appreciate it and see how long don't see how long it stays in your life. Don't appreciate it or a person. Mm -hmm. So everybody in your life, if you want them to stick around, you better start saying, I'm grateful for you. I appreciate you. I'm grateful for what you do. I appreciate you. I want to show you I appreciate you. Human beings are always big at telling people what they don't like about them or what they're upset about, yeah. but they won't say I love you as quick as they say I'm mad at you. Yeah. They won't say I appreciate you as quick as they say you need to be doing this different to make me happy. We, we don't put as much energy in, in appreciation and love generally as we put in living. Everybody know what we're upset about or what we don't like. Right. And what, okay, so if that's what you're putting out there, you just draw more people you don't like. Yes. Right. And then the people you love, you don't ever let them know. And the court says, what you don't express, you forget is there. So if I don't ever tell you I love you, I'll for, I literally forget I love you. And I start taking you for granted. And then you'll meet somebody that goes, I appreciate you. And then, I'll, you'll, be, then you'll be drawn to that person. You may even feel guilty about it. You know, you'll be drawn to that person. So remember... If your relationship breaks up, if someone seems to be interested in somebody, if whatever happens, you are part of that as much as the other person. A relationship is always a collaborative venture. Both people are always responsible for what's happening in a relationship. So never let your ego say, I did it perfectly, they were the problem. <laughs> because if you do that, you're removing yourself from the problem. And the Course teaches if you remove yourself from the problem, you've now made the problem un unresolvable. <laughs> Because you are the problem, and you are the answer. So if you take you out of the equation, you've set up the situation that it cannot be solved. And remember that. Every time you say, it's somebody else, and I have nothing to do with it, you're making it unsolvable. It may sound good to your ego to say that, but it ain't true. They didn't go, out, they didn't go get somebody else for no reason. <laughs> they didn't stop being affectionate to you for no reason. You weren't this perfect mate. And all of a sudden, they just had to have someone else. Don't you tell yourself that lie. You also had a part to play. Yes. Earl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was, that was a holy, really ritualistic. Uh, that was a holy, that was a holy. Yeah. 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 So before we run out of here, Give me one thought you heard that you that you want to that you want to hang on. Anybody, just throw them out. I'm innocent. You innocent. Conscious beings aren't limited. Conscious beings aren't limited. That the fact that I yearn for God and that God yearns for me is changeless. The fact that you yearn for love and love yearns for you that will never change. 
That's right. Instead of looking down, I need to look up to the next ledge above me and say, help me. Don't think about it. Just do it. Don't think about it. Stop all the thinking. Because if I don't have to believe it, all I have to do is say it as a symbolic gesture to show I'm willing to be healed. That's all. And eternal, if, it's, if it's real, it will always be there. If it's not real, it's temporary. Don't take people for granted. Stop taking people for granted and show them appreciation. So, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Tell somebody, I appreciate you. 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 What about us? What about myself? I appreciate myself. 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 I love y'all. Thanks for coming. I love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all.